Thank you for invitation for great conference. I am Dr. Yoshinobu Sato from Kyushu Medical Center, Japan. My topic is the law of imaging in bifurcation. Recently, Japanese and Korean bifurcation clubs published the consensus document in terms of coronary imaging in bifurcation intervention. We recap the laws of imaging in bifurcation PCI as follows. In pre-procedure of optimal selection of devices and PCI strategy are important. First, measurement of dimension of lumen and vessel in member cell and side branch. Second, assessment of atherosclerotic plaque morphology, burden, longitudinal distribution, calcification, and negative remodeling. Third, detection of angiographically silent disease. Fourth, assessment of the risk of side branch compromise. In post PCI optimization of procedure is crucial for better clinical outcome. The following should be assessed in imaging. First, stent apposition. Second, stent expansion. Third, full region coverage by the stent. Fourth, stent edge dissection. Fifth, plaque prolapse inside stent. Sixth, side branch residual stenosis and dissection. Seventh, optimal guide or recrossing before side branch dilation and subsequent adequate clearance of jading struts after side branch dilation. General practical imaging indexes for optimal PCI are also summarized in the European Society of Cardiology Consensus Paper. First, minimum stent area should be more than 5.5 mm square in IBARS and for, uh, more than 4.5 mm square in OCT. Uh, second, stent expansion index uh, more than 80%. The stent edge uh, should be located at the site of where plaque burden less than 50% and no repeat ball. My opposition should be limited less than 400 micrometer in actual distance and less than 1 mm in length. Generally, IBUS is useful for the detection of the external elastic lamina or actual plaque burden, while OCT is used for the detection of the lipid pore, dissection, malapposition, and plaque protrusion. This is the actual clinical study comparing the angio guidance and OCT guidance. In the pre Intervention OCT changes strategy in 82%, mainly because region length, stent diameter, and the finding of tick fur. In the post-intervention, OCT changes additional procedure due to stent malapposition, edge dissection, and under expansion. CLI OPCA study is a randomized trial comparing the angel and OCT guidance. In the composite endpoint of cardiac death and myocardial infarction, hazard ratio is significantly reduced to 0.44 in OCT guidance. IBUS has shown more evidence for its efficacy on left main intervention. In the main compare study from Korea, demonstrated that IBUS guidance decreased mortality. In the pooled analysis of around 1,000 patients, IBUS guidance showed higher survival free from composite endpoints of cardiac death, MI, and target region revascularization. IBUS guidance is also effective to reduce stent thrombosis. According to these practical evidence, current guideline for imaging guidance has been devised in the ESC guidelines. IBUS for left main and IBUS and or OCT for stent related mechanical problem are listed as class 2A. In Japanese guideline, 
IBUS for left main and bifurcation is in class 1 and 2A respectively, while OCT for bifurcation is in class 2A. Recent innovation in the 3D OCT which can visualize guideway recrossing in the side branch and the subsequent stent transformation by Kissenbaum inflation. We conducted 3D OCT bifurcation registry in Japan and clarified the effect of ring connection on remain gel struts after Kissenbaum inflation. We divided to the following pattern according to the existence of ring connection at the carina, ring free and ring connecting type. Once distal guide wire recrossing is achieved in the ring free type, while side branch opening is achieved, while in ring connecting type, Jet ring and struts remain even after distal guide wire recrossing and subsequent high pressure kissing bound inflation. A way defined LFD type as distal wiring in link free type and investigated incomplete strut apposition. LFD type resulted in less incomplete center apposition at the side branch ostium compared to non LFD type. We also investigated the success rate of optimal distal wiring in 3D OCT guided PCI. In first attempt, that means angel guidance, it was only 66%. Accumulating the attempt elevated the success rate to 87%. In the comparison between left main and non left main bifurcation, Success rate in the angel guidance is only 56%. It is very low. In the comparison between 2D and 3D OCT guidance in impact on incomplete center position, in the left main bifurcation, 3D OCT guidance is more favorable than that in 2D OCT. This is an actual clinical case that 3D OCT guidance effectively worked for appropriate guideway recrossing in two stenting. We treated this complex through bifurcation region in left main. A way deployed the two stent with curl technique in both branches. This is a 3D OCT images after left main to L6 stenting. Guideway recrossing point is the distal, it seems to too far. However, link in the neighboring proximal cell has the risk of incomplete removal of the jail struts. Therefore, we directed this cell. This is the images after left main to the LED stenting. Guideway across in the middle cell, the indicated point are too distal because the decrossed cell have the risk of limitation of expansion due to the existence of the link. Therefore, we dilate the middle cell. Kissenbaum inflation and report were subsequently performed. Final CAG was acceptable. Final OCT also demonstrated wide stent expansion in both LED and SX ostium and good stent expansion. In the one stent deployment in the bifurcation region, we definitely agree that routine performance of angel guided Kissenbaum inflation should not be performed which is likely to result in more suboptimal results. However, according to the OCT follow-up studies, we fear the following. Are the jail struts in the side of the ostium really safe forever? This is a follow-up OCT study investigating the correlation between LSX ostium area narrowing and the jail struts number. Uh, there is a positive correlation which suggests that more gel struts promote more L6 osteo narrowing.
Recently, a federal guided sideways treatment is proposed as follows. Even in the case with sideways compliance after member sustaining, preserved FFR more than 0.8 cell allowed to leave sideways treatment. Actual condition of sideband ostium is indicated in the slide. Shifted carina is located in the sideband ostium, and the remained lumen is still enough uh, to tolerate marker ischemia. However, we know the condition induced by optimal sideband treatment is much better. Shifted carina corrected to the neutral position and complete removal of jade struts. But we should know how often we perform sub-optimal side match dilation. It is more than 60% in the angel guidance. Therefore, accurate assessment of the guideway recrossing point and subsequent stent deformation by side match dilation in 3D OCT it facilitates more optimal sideband treatment. Currently, we revise the classification of the jailing strut pattern and sideband treatment strategy. In addition to link free and link connecting types, we newly involve the no or less jailing type. In the link-free type, 3D OCT guided distal wiring is strongly recommended. In the link connecting type, 3D OCT guided distal wiring does not always lead to optimal result. More aggressive part may change the category to LF type. In no or less jailing type, we can leave it with confidence except for the side bunch a compromise. The bifurcated vessel should be reconstructed according to vascular branching law to minimize energy loss and prevent low shear stress in the bifurcated area. Stent expansion is crucial to prevent target region failure, however, Element 3 reveal the rate of stent under expansion in which stent expansion index less than 80% was uh, 59%. One of the reasons for higher prevalence of stent under expansion was the definition of the vessel reference that was the average of proximal and distal references. Minimum expansion index is a proposed volumetric analysis obtained by creating an ideal lumen profile considering vessel tapering and branching using flow CASAB model. A possible correlation between the minimum expansion index and the post-PCI FFR is reported and a minimum expansion index more than 73% corresponds to final FFR more than 0.86 which suggests no remained functional ischemia. This is an actual OCT analysis cases with long stenting across the bifurcation. Minimum stent area is 3.45 mm square that is located at this member cell, but the expansion index is 89%. That means and the stent is sufficiently expanded according to the distal member cell reference. Minimum expansion index is 67% that is located at proximal member cell with stent area of 4.5 mm square, which used to be considered as adequate stent expansion. However, it is inadequate for proximal member cell reference which require more proximal optimization. Therefore, the target of post direction is changed from minimum stand area to minimum expansion index. This is a scheme of the imaging guidance in bifurcation intervention. In the PPCI, the imaging in both member cell and side branch is necessary for region assessment, device sizing, and the decision of side branch treatment. Second imaging is 
performed after member stenting and subsequent part to assess stent expansion, malabsorption, and gelling strut pattern. After guide wire recursion, confirmation of guide wire recursion point by 3D OCT is recommended. After kissing balloon inflation or side by dilation, imaging should be done to assess final stent expansion and apposition, deformation, and the necessity of additional treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my conclusion slide. The accurate Morphological assessment of the main vessel and the side branch using an intraluminal imaging devices before and after procedure are important for optimization of the device during complex bifurcation procedure. Imaging guidance can provide procedure optimization, which leads to improvement of clinical outcome. A physiological stimulation using 3D morphological assessment has been available and the natural bifurcate vessel reconstruction uh, according to the vessel branching law is important. Thank you for your attention.